From unsavory animal bits to things that may not even be food, here are 11 disgusting foods Westerners eat. Artificial Calamari This is said to be an urban legend, and all legends stem from some element of truth no matter how small. This may or may not be true, but it is interesting enough to share. It focuses on imitation calamari. It began when someone saw a box of artificial calamari at a pig farm. When asked what it was, someone said that it was pig bung or pig rectum. If you see a picture of bung, you'll notice that it looks very similar to calamari when fried. It's not uncommon, and many say it's really tasty. I don't know about you, but if I want calamari, that means I do not want a hog's bung. Words spread like wildfire, and everyone started accusing restaurants of selling bung as calamari. This would be illegal, and since not much was ever officially spoken after that, it wouldn't surprise me if the silence was to avoid trouble. The study is that the reason the man didn't speak up was because his girlfriend didn't want his name being associated with such a subject as a hog's rear end. Which doesn't really matter, since we eat all kinds of pig parts anyway. We really don't care about bung, man, but what we do care about is the calamari we've been eating and everyone trying to trick us into eating things we didn't ask for. Bull testicles. There is nothing quite like eating a plate of bull testicles. Who doesn't want to feast on the cooked testicles of a large animal? In the West, bull testicles are a pretty popular meal. It's not something to be eaten every day, but it's not hard to find. Bull testicles are known under many different names such as Montana tender groins, cowboy caviar, calf fries, prairie oysters, and Rocky Mountain oysters. The testicles used are typically removed from a bull in his youth so that the bull will be less masculine and less aggressive. This generally happens when the calf is branded. Its testicles are cut off and then tossed into a bucket of water. But why throw out perfectly good testicles? After the bull is castrated, its testicles are peeled, washed, rolled in some flour, and then fried to be eaten. They are actually considered to be a pretty tasty delicacy. And just like other meats made from organs, you can cook testicles in a variety of different and exciting ways. You can have deep fried testicles, sliced testicles, or marinated testicles. This rather crude dish was first popularized by cowboys in the American Old West, though the eating of animal genitalia goes all the way back to ancient Rome. That was back when many people believed that eating an animal sex organ could enhance the same organ on a human. Even today in Asia, some animal genitalia are believed to be an aphrodisiac. But of course, this is the most absurd thing you could possibly believe. You're just eating meat. Spray cheese. Spray cheese is often seen as the height of processed food in all its disgusting glory. Spray cheese is gooey, a little orange, and absolutely horrendous for your body. But nonetheless, Americans eat spray cheese like it's going out of style. And while many people claim spray cheese has absolutely no cheese in it, and that's the contents of the can hold nothing but poisonous chemicals, that's actually not completely true. Spray cheese definitely isn't going to do you any favors in the health department. If you're trying to move away from processed foods, you definitely don't want to start sucking spray cheese out of the can. And to be completely honest, nothing that comes squirted from a can is probably going to be that good for you. However, spray cheese actually does contain quite a bit of cheese, and this may surprise a lot of people who have already demonized the product. A typical can of spray cheese really does contain cheddar cheese. However, the deal is that cheese spreads are only required by law to contain 51% cheese, according to an article from Spoon University. So you can deduce what the other 49% of the ingredients consist of. Basically, half the can is liquid cheese, and the other half is anyone's guess. Coolicles. Coolicles don't really have much use existing in the world. If you have ever thought to yourself that normal pickles simply aren't good enough and need to be a little nastier, you may want to try a coolicle. Basically, you take a dill pickle and a cold glass of Kool-Aid, and you stuff your pickle inside of it. You are then going to brine your pickle using Kool-Aid, and you will eventually be left with an absolutely horrifying coolicle. This bizarre invention came out of Mississippi in the American South, according to the Huffington Post. The end result is a pickle unnaturally colored, usually red, and bursting with that sweet Kool-Aid flavor. And while this may seem like a totally ridiculous creation to some people, to others, it is simply genius. And since its invention, coolicles have been spreading away from Mississippi to other parts of the country. I wouldn't be surprised if Kool-Aid pickles are on store shelves all over the nation in the next couple of years. The best part is you can do it yourself. Just get a gallon of dill pickles, a few packets of Kool-Aid, and a whopping pound of sugar. Pickle away. And now for number seven, but be sure to tell us if you have ever tried any of these foods in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. 
alligator tails. If you are from Canada, Europe, or even Russia, the thought of eating alligator meat is probably completely ridiculous. But not in the United States, and especially not in the southern United States. Alligator is actually a great alternative to chicken or pork, and supposedly the meat is super nutritious for you. In places like Florida, alligators are nearly as widespread as cows, though not quite. As you can imagine, the feasting of alligators goes back many centuries in lots of places in Asia, but it has lost its popularity with the decline of the species. But in the US, alligator is still in abundance, and the favorite part of the alligator to eat is the tail. Alligators obviously don't have wings or breasts to eat, but they definitely have big and meaty tails ready for the cooking. You can cook alligator meat in a variety of ways, but a typical restaurant will serve it as an appetizer. Popular ways to cook your alligator tail for a main course is to have it baked, grilled, fried, or sautéed. Agudik. Agudik is also known as Alaskan ice cream, and it's not really that weird. It's actually kind of delicious. Some people call it Eskimo ice cream, and it basically consists of dried fish, berries, dried moose or caribou meat, fish or seal oil, all whipped together into a yummy ice cream. This unusual snack was enjoyed for centuries before white men arrived in Alaska. The word Aguduk, pronounced agu duck, actually means to stir. It's a very fitting name considering the dish involves whipping of whole lots of animals fat by hand. Huge batches of Alaskan ice cream used to be stored in the permafrost cellar of a family home so that there was always a little ready for a meal or to serve to guests. Nowadays, aguduk is known widely as Eskimo ice cream, and it has become a favorite not only in Alaska, but in many other regions as well. The best versions of Alaskan ice cream typically use blueberry and salmonberry mixed with seal oil. Brain Sandwich They call it a brain sandwich, but it's honestly a brain burger. This absolutely weird meal consists of a brain patty smacked between two hamburger buns and loaded with condiments. Where did such a bizarre dish come from? Well, back in the late 19th century, there was a lot of meat packing going on in Illinois, and each time a cow went to be slaughtered, the brain would be wasted, and that is a lot of meat. And so, the meat needed to be used, thus the brain sandwich was born. To make eating the brains of an animal less disgusting, diners in Missouri began to bread and fry the brains, then swaddle them in a bun or some marble rye. They obscured the flavor even more by slathering on mustard, pickles, and onions. But even with the brain tasting yummy, it was still a tricky dish. For example, whoever was cooking the brains needed to have cold hands, as any warmth had the potential to actually melt the brain in such a way that it would not be cooked very well. You couldn't even deep fry a brain because it would just melt. In any case, brain sandwiches started in Illinois. Missouri, and Indiana, and it's these three states where the sandwich is still available today in select restaurants. I highly doubt McDonald's will start selling brain sandwiches anytime soon. Burgoo. Burgoo is one of the most popular dishes in North America. There is probably a burgoo restaurant very close to you right now and you don't even know it. However, it's not burgoo itself that is weird. Modern burgoo is a delicious brown stew that is full of different meats, typically pork, beef, and some kind of bird. All the ingredients in modern burgoo recipes are from things that wouldn't cause someone to turn their nose up in dismay. But original burgoo is a whole different story. Burgoo comes from Kentucky. It's one of the traditional Kentucky dishes, and yes, it has has spread throughout the world. Many people claim it was first invented by a Frenchman by the name of Gus Joubert during the Civil War, but unlike today's burgoo, the original stuff was made out of squirrel, raccoon, possum, rat, owl, and whatever other meats was available. Basically, it was a dish of necessity, a thick stew that used whatever animal bits were nearby. Some even claim the actual name burgoo is just a mispronunciation of bird stew, as the original meal would have used a lot of bird parts. Root beer. Root beer is one of the most common drinks in North America. Mexicans, Americans, and Canadians all drink lots of root beer. But while we might find it delicious, the rest of the world thinks it's absolutely disgusting. The Japanese, the Europeans, the Irish, and basically anyone who doesn't live in the Western Hemisphere finds root beer repulsive. It is unanimously the most disgusting drink in Western culture. Oddly enough, this could be due to a poor choice in ingredients on the part of the original makers. You see, root beer was made originally using sassafras. While totally normal in America, sassafras is used in other countries in medicine. It's like if the Japanese decided to make a famous soft drink taste like cough syrup. Nobody in their right mind would want to drink a beverage that tastes like disgusting cough syrup, and that's how foreigners feel about root beer. If you ever find yourself in Japan and seek out some medicine, you may find it has a familiar root beer smell. And while appealing to Americans, it's definitely disgusting for everyone else. Haggis 
Haggis is probably the most disgusting western food on the planet and also the most popular and most well known. Haggis is the national dish of Scotland and it has been made the same way for hundreds and hundreds of years. At its core, haggis is a kind of pudding made from the liver, lungs, and a heart of a sheep. The organs are then mixed with mutton and oatmeal, seasoned heavily with spices, packed into the stomach of the sheep, then boiled to perfection. That's pretty much all the organs in one convenient stomach wrapped meal. Throughout the 18th century, haggis was popular in both Scotland and England, according to Britannica. However, a food similar to haggis could have been made so far back as the 15th century in other parts of Europe. Today, haggis is enjoyed in a more ritualistic and ceremonial manner, like for a New Year celebration. Turducken Turducken is one of the most disgusting bird foods created in the West. As the bizarre name would suggest, turducken is a chicken, turkey, and duck. First, the chicken is stuffed into a duck, then the duck is stuffed into a turkey. You get all your favorite birds stuffed inside of each other for one complicated dish. This way, when the turducken is sliced, every single slice contains a little bit of chicken, a little bit of duck, and a little bit of turkey, complete with stuffing between the layers. It's not a difficult dish to make, but it will eat up a lot of time. It's definitely definitely the most complicated Thanksgiving recipe. The true origin of this strange dish is unknown, but many believe that it was first invented by a Louisiana chef back in the 1970s or the 1980s. Paul Prudhomme trademarked the name in 1986 and served it at his restaurant in Louisiana. Since then, the recipe has exploded and it's even growing now in popularity as a fancy dish for Thanksgiving. Which of these foods do you want to go out right now and feast on? Tell me in the comments below and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and come back soon for another great video. Yeah.